Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to an episode that I can only describe as out of this world only on Smile to Jannah. Now when I was young Don't listen to this mug, I still am young. If the media wasn't trying to convince me that I was following some sort of terrorist religion, you had the school curriculum that was trying to convince me that my predecessors were pretty much useless and most of these modern day uh, technological advances were made mostly by Europeans. But for some reason I discovered this book yeah and because of that I started looking into Islamic discoveries and boy, 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 I was shocked and kind of relieved that <laughs> our predecessors weren't losers but it did get me thinking and I was quite concerned as to why I actually had to dig into this sort of stuff to find out about Islamic contribution to our modern world. A week ago a private US company SpaceX launched two NASA astronauts into space. The efficiency and technology of this whole endeavour was the highlight. And of course you've got the likes of China who have also announced their Mars mission as well as other countries as well. Islam and science has always gone hand in hand. You only need to look into the golden age to see how many examples of this we actually have. And the book 1001 Inventions Muslim Heritage in Our World is a great start. I also used it in this video amongst other sources. As Muslims our calendar relies on the moon, our five daily prayers rely on the position of the sun, so naturally knowledge of the cosmos has always been necessary. Now all of this is fair enough but why should NASA and Elon Musk thank the Muslims I hear you ask. In summary the Islamic civilization gave us number one the first manned rocket. That's right, in 1633 Lagari Hassan flew on a seven winged rocket using 140 pounds of gunpowder. Now this was reported by Evilia Celebi in his book Sihatsaname. Number two, the first modern observatory in Iraq was in 828. The first one in Europe came 730 years afterwards. Number three, the first solo flyer was someone called Abbas ibn Firnas. Number four, records of stars and constellations. In fact the name of 165 stars still reflect their Arabic origins. And most importantly Muslims have contributed to Renaissance scientists like Reggio Montanus, Dante. The astronomer Al Fargani flourished around 850 and worked in Baghdad and Cairo. His introduction to astronomy shown here was studied by Dante. And the father of modern day astronomy himself Copernicus. But what many don't mention about Copernicus is how much he was actually influenced by Muslims. Mashallah, brother! In fact in his book Revolutionibus he mentions prominent Muslim astronomer and mathematician Al-Batani by name he called Makometo Sarafensis and means Al-Batani and presents his data in the original Arabic. I mean what more proof do you want? And of course there are others that he didn't mention but it's clear that he replicated their work. Crook! Well are you a crook? They are Ibn al-Shatir. It looks like he was working from diagrams. Somebody gave him a, a geometric diagram of what was done by Ibn al-Shatir to solve the problem of the moon for example, to solve the problem of the upper planets, to solve the problem of the movement of Mercury. He had diagrams. And Nasr al-Din al-Tusi. But on this page al-Tusi works out the geometry of one circle moving within a larger circle to produce a so-called crank mechanism. In the De Revolutionibus of Copernicus published in 1543 Copernicus also used al-Tusi's crank mechanism for his model of the moon's motions. Even down to the letters that mark the points on the circles. 
The existence of this printed edition is proof of the great interest by European scientists in the Renaissance, in the texts of Al-Tusi and other Islamic scientists. Because of the widespread European interest in works of Islamic science, even as late as the generation of Kepler and Galileo, the Medici set up a press to print Arabic works in Rome. This work by Idrisi is therefore one of the first books printed in Europe in Arabic. And if that's not all, Copernicus himself grew up studying the works of Reggio Montanus, yeah? Who, yep, you've guessed it, also used Muslim sources like Al Batani <laughs> and also unmentioned sources like Ali Hushji. You are a crook. You are a crook. Jamil Rajep is holding the Oklahoma copy of Regio Montanus open to the same diagram. Rajep has recently shown that the 15th century Islamic astronomer Ali Kushchi, a generation before Regio Montanus, used an identical diagram to make the same proof. If we say that Regio Montanus paved the way for Copernicus, then we can say the same for Ali Kushchi. And guys, I can go on, but many manuscripts have either been lost or they are still locked up, some haven't been studied yet, whilst others aren't popularized by the gatekeepers of modern information. I mean your school textbooks or your encyclopedias and so on. Now the question arises guys, why were our predecessors so successful? Well first and foremost they perfected their relationship with Allah. So Allah perfected their relationship with the people and the wider world. Now if you look at any important integral invention of the modern era and you track it back, there will be some sort of Muslim involvement in it somewhere. I will attach the link to some documentaries that I saw and that you know may be of uh, some benefit and I'll attach the link to the book as well. Let's leave it there guys until next time. Mm. Assalamu alaikum.